This whole year is called the year of sorrow because of the calamities that the Prophet ﷺ underwent. And this occurred in the 10th year of the da'wah, around two and a half to three years before the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ. The first of these calamities was that Abu Talib fell sick and the pangs of death began upon him. It was clear that he was about to die. And it says that when Abu Talib reached the nearness of death, when the pangs of death began upon him, the Prophet ﷺ entered in upon him while Abu Jahl was there. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Oh my uncle, say La ilaha illallah. Kalimatan uhajuka biha indallah. If you just say this kalima, I have an excuse. If you don't say it, I don't have an excuse. And he was about to say it. But there with him was Abu Jahl and Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. And they said to him, are you going to leave the religion of Abdul Muttalib, your father? And they kept on saying this to him every time they thought he was going to say it. They said to him, Ya Abu Talib, you're going to leave Abdul Muttalib's religion. And they kept on going back and forth until the last that he said, he is upon the religion of Abdul Muttalib. He never actually said, La ilaha illallah. And so when the Prophet ﷺ saw this, he said, I shall continue to ask Allah to forgive you. Until Allah stops me from doing so. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran, Ma kala lil nabi wal ladhina amanu an yastaghfiru lil mushrikina walaw alkanu uli qurba min ba'di ma tabayyana lahum annahum ashabu jahim. This is Surah at tawbah that Allah says it is not appropriate or for the believers that they ask Allah to forgive anyone who's going to help even if they're relatives it's not right and the Prophet ﷺ desisted from seeking his forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reveals Surah Al-Qasas at this time. And in Surah Al-Qasas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ That you, Ya Rasulullah, will not be able to guide those whom you love. Rather, Allah guides those whom He wishes to guide. And in another hadith in Abu Dawood's uh, Sunan, uh, we find that it was in fact Ali ibn Abi Talib who eventually came to inform him that his father had died. So from this we actually come together that the Prophet ﷺ visited Abu Talib on his deathbed, but he wasn't there when he died. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, go and bury him. And Ali said, but he died a mushrik, meaning how can I bury him? He's, he's not a Muslim. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, go and bury him. And come back as soon as you have finished burying him, don't do anything on the way. Ali went and buried him, and then he came back and the dust was still on his body. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ made a long dua for him. And Ali said that I would not give up all of those duas for this world and all that is in it. That the Prophet ﷺ made dua for him to uh, calm him down and to bring him uh, solace and comfort. And Abbas, the younger brother, of Abu Talib, he asked uh, the Prophet وسلم, have you benefited your uncle anything? He used to protect you and be angry on your behalf. And so the Prophet وسلم, said, Naam, yes, I was able to benefit him. He is on the peripheries of the fire of hell. When Abu Talib died, this proved to be a very politically difficult time for the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because Abu Talib was his, in our times, visa or passport to living in Mecca, right? Abu Talib was his protection. Everybody wanted him out. None of the elders of the Quraysh wanted him to be in Mecca. And so with the death of Abu Talib, he was in a very precarious situation. And Ibn Ishaq says that after the death of Abu Talib, the Quraysh could increase their irritation and their persecution of the Prophet ﷺ like never before. And another tabi'i says that with the death of Abu Talib, the Quraysh could finally come out what they were forced to hide in the time of Abu Talib. Moving on, the death of Abu Talib was followed by another loss that was no less insignificant and in many ways even more painful than the first one and that was the death of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And Ibn al-Jawzi says this death occurred within 40 days of the death of Abu Talib. And Abu Talib passed away in the beginning of Shawwal. Khadija passed away on the 10th of Ramadan.
When Khadija passed away, the salah had not yet been revealed. So there was no janazah performed over her because there was no salah at the time. But the Prophet ﷺ took charge of burying her. He himself entered into the grave and he himself put her body there. And a number of Sahaba reported that after the death of Khadija, we did not see the Prophet ﷺ smile for months on end. And there's no question that these two people were the closest to him. Abu Talib is his father figure and Abu Talib protected him externally. Khadija is his wife his closest friend, his first supporter, and the one who protected him internally, the one who gave him support inside of the house. And both of these two together proved to be a very traumatic time for the process. And it is because of the death of these two that this entire year is called the year of sorrow.